Here's the thing, being held accountable for your own actions isn't called discrimination. It's called being, you wouldn't believe it, a goddamn bloody adult. Jackie Lambie is easily Australia's most interesting politician and the Weekend Australian magazine's writer Fiona Harari has been spending time with her. Fiona, as we were walking up the stairs to do this interview, you said, I'm pretty loud, but Jackie Lambie is a lot louder than me. (laughs) Which is saying something, yes. She doesn't, I don't think she even needs to try and project her voice. And this is, I say this with admiration, the first time you see her or hear her becoming passionate about something is quite an experience. But don't you any of you women dare stand up and talk about women's rights in that chamber because as of today, in my eyes, your credibility has gone down the gurgler. That was a press conference where Jackie Lambie was advocating for low-paid women to break away from a powerful union and its leader, John Setka. You don't want these women to have rights because you would rather bend over for John Setka. That's what it comes down to. It tells you something about how Lambie has changed since her first days in Parliament, when she was a complete unknown, elected in 2014 as part of mining billionaire Clive Palmer's short-lived political party. She actually got into the Senate in Tasmania on the back of just 1,501 primary votes. So she obviously wasn't very well known, and I think it's fair to say I don't think people had any regard for her because one way or the other because they didn't know her. And then she very quickly made a name for herself, but I think for all the wrong reasons. She was quite outlandish. She'd make very inflammatory comments. And she probably said a lot of things that she hadn't necessarily known a lot about or thought a lot about. This is Jackie Lambie in 2014 on ABC Radio, talking about allegations Russia shot down a civilian airliner, MH17. 38 Australians had died. What the bloody hell was an airliner doing going over a war zone in the first place? That is the question we need to go back to. Vladimir Putin did not pull the trigger. That's the first thing I'll say, and I think they should welcome Vladimir Putin into the country until, like I said, until he's, um, you know, either A, if he has any, played any part in that, until evidence of that comes out in the open. I think you'll find with a man in Putin, Putin's got enough smarts. If Putin had had his own way, that would never have ever happened. He's not an idiot. And the contrast that I found in the past decade is quite pronounced. We can question how committed politicians are to benefiting public life, but her passion, her passion is visible and abundant. And I think that's really what has assisted her, particularly in the last few years. There's something quite magical about Jackie Lambie's performances in the Senate on issues she has made her own. The treatment of military veterans, Australian manufacturing and foreign interference. There's a lot of shouting in Parliament, but it's all very Victorian, with lots of fusty convention and bellows of hear, hear and Mr Speaker. Jackie Lambie's addresses to the chamber are a bit like watching a calm Sunday drive get overtaken by a sudden bout of road rage. Senator Lambie, you have the call. Check this out, a speech from 2022 about then-PM Scott Morrison's promise of a federal integrity watchdog. She starts out calm. She even sounds a bit bored and weary. Thank you. Uh, It has been 1,076 days since the Liberals promised us an integrity commission. 1,076 days. Lambie goes with an analogy. A baby born on the day in 2019 Scott Morrison made his promise would now be three years of age. She's learned to crawl, to stand up, to walk. She's pretty much getting ready for preschool now and she's probably learning to count. And then the explosion. You know what? That baby's made more progress in a thousand days than the Liberal Party have on their own bill. That is where we're at. A three-year-old. Shameful. Shameful. Like I said, shrieking in Parliament is not unusual. But when Lambie does it, it doesn't feel like the usual theatrics. It's not even a bill, it's a ghost. It's in a whole pretend. It's another lie. Australian people are looking at you. They're sick of your lies. You do not deliver. You are finished in the next election. You're gone, I can tell you. You may want to get out there with your own boots on and see what your electorates are saying. Because I'll tell you what, you're finished. You're finished in Tasmania. Lambie wasn't quite right about that, in fact. 
Scott Morrison's coalition did lose the election, but Tasmania was the only place where the coalition increased its lower house vote. The Jackie Lambie network won just under 24,000 votes, nearly 7%, but it didn't win a seat in the lower house. In the upper house, the Senate, it's a different story. Jackie Lambie herself wasn't up for re-election in 2022 because senators serve six-year terms and only stand every second election. But Lambie put up a longtime friend, Tammy Tyrrell, as her candidate, and she was elected with 31,000 votes, about 8.6%. That puts Lambie in a powerful position. She's got two Senate seats, and the Albanese government can't get legislation through the Senate, the upper house, without support from the Greens' 11 senators, plus two more. That means Lambie and Tyrrell, or the other crossbenchers, David Pocock or Lydia Thorpe. She's become very famous for her catchphrases, which seem simultaneously unstudied and inarticulate, but also are very pithy and and sum things up quite well, like be a goddamn bloody adult. Which she's now quite interestingly marketed. And you can, from the Jackie Lambie shop, you can buy a range of T-shirts and stubby holders with some of her pronouncements on them or with cartoon figures of Rambo or, you know, Action Jackie, you know, on your stubby holder. I spent one particularly frenetic day with her where she held a press conference and I have to say, having written notes as a journalist for many decades, I have never had to write so furiously (laughs) trying to describe not just what she said but how she said it and the way her passion was becoming apparent. What was it like interviewing Jackie Lambie? Was she surrounded by advisors the whole time? She's only got a staff of three, but at least one of them was often around whilst we were chatting. So there were snatches of conversation that we had. And then the one time that we ended up chatting alone, I don't know if this was coincidental, that's when she revealed to me, and it was sort of off the cuff, that I I asked her where she saw herself in five or ten years. And, you know, she talked about wanting to do more for Tasmania and hopefully getting another term. And then she said, you know, in about 10 years' time, then I'd be about 60, maybe then we'll be a Republican, I could be the president. (laughs) And her staff heard about it later and were not keen on it being published, but of course it was. After the break, how Jackie Lambie's Indigenous heritage and the hard times have shaped her. On March 21, we're holding a special live event in Sydney. It's me and our Middle East correspondent, Yoni Bashan, in conversation, talking about his time in Israel and Gaza and answering your questions. You can register now at theaustralianplus.com.au. That's theaustralianplus.com.au. And we'll be back after this break. Jackie Lambie has been through tough times. She spent a decade in the Australian Army and was medically discharged with a serious back injury, then spent another decade fighting the Department of Veterans Affairs to be compensated for her injury. She's spoken frankly about a suicide attempt during those years. In 2017, there was another blow. Lambie had to suddenly leave Parliament after it was discovered she, along with other politicians, unwittingly held dual citizenship of another country, in her case, the United Kingdom, through ancestral connections. She had to resign her seat and was re-elected in 2019. Jackie Lambie is herself of Aboriginal heritage and she's got some interesting thoughts that she shared with you about the state of politics now for Indigenous Australians. She said she's really angry with Labor for failing the Aboriginal community. She says they should get their Dolce & Gabbana suits off and start blending in to see what the problems are. She also has some thoughts that are not dissimilar from what Jacinta Numpy Impa Price says about remote communities and disadvantage in communities. She says, if you're running around and you're drunk and you're on drugs and they're calling you an elder, then you're not an effing elder. It's rare to hear a politician express thoughts quite so frankly, isn't it? Even Jacinta Numpy Impa Price wouldn't say it quite like that. No, I, like I have to say, I have never written down the F word quite as often in one interview <laughs> in my many years as a journalist. Again, I mean, I think this is something she feels very passionate about. It's not even in a sense because she has Aboriginal heritage. I just think she thinks this is a very important issue. But it's a very complex issue. I don't think that she is proposing any particular solution. But I think that 
setting an example is what underlines a lot of what she stands for. And again, I think that goes back to her military training, that there is a way to do things. And so would she consider herself to be setting that kind of example, do you think, her own life story? Yeah, look, I don't think that she would say she's perfect in any sense. When I went to talk to a range of politicians to get their views on her, one of the things that was pointed out is that she has shown an ability to learn and to heed and to, if necessary, change the way she thinks about things. Uh, She went on a program when she had to leave parliament because of the dual citizenship saga. She went on a couple of reality TV shows and one of them she ended up with refugees in Syria. And I think that that probably reshaped her attitude to refugees. So I think she does have this ability to take in information and if necessary, reconsider her position, which you may not agree with her position always, but I think you'd have to respect the fact that she's able to listen to other sides, which, you know, we probably don't get enough of these days. And so did you buy any merch? No, that would be against <laughs> that would be against the rules. I can admire <laughs> it from a distance. But she has some really interesting stuff, but I do like the T-shirts. I'm just looking at the moment at the photo we've got of her holding a beer can in one of her beer stubbies, sort of smiling <laughs> cheekily. It's, it's, she's very entertaining. Fiona Harari is a writer with The Weekend Australian magazine. Her story on Jackie Lambie is live for subscribers now at theaustralian.com.au. Thanks for joining us on The Front. Our team is Kristen Amiot, Leah Tsamaglou, Jasper Leake, Josh Burton, Tiffany Dimack, Matthew Condon and me, Claire Harvey. <laughs>